Today, we're going to be taking a look at two devices from QNAP designed to help you manage your data at home, as well as give you the best possible coverage for Wi-Fi. This is the QMiro Plus 201, which is a network storage device with a built-in mesh Wi-Fi router, as well as the QMiro mesh Wi-Fi extender, helping you to get the best possible performance from that mesh Wi-Fi network in your home. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of both of these devices, walk you through their specs and features, and then at the end, I'm going to give you my thoughts having spent a bit of time with them. I do just want to be clear up front that QNAP have sent me both of these devices for free. However, they have not seen this video before it's been published, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. The QMiro Plus 201W from QNAP is an all-in-one mesh Wi-Fi data storage solution for your home or office. It has a two-bay built-in NAS that supports RAID, built-in gigabit Ethernet, as well as that tri-band mesh Wi-Fi router. Taking a closer look at the main spec, as I've said, it features a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi system with four internal antennas and supports the 802.11a, B, G, N, A, C protocols or AC220. It has five Ethernet ports of which one is a two and a half gig port which connects directly to the built-in NAS and there are four one gigabit Ethernet ports on the device with one of them being internal to the NAS and the other three available on the back and there's also a WAN port there for connecting the internet. It has two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and as I've mentioned supports two two and a half inch drive bays supporting either two SSDs SSDs up to 4 terabytes or two serial ATA drives in excess of 1 terabyte each. As I've mentioned, this is a combined all-in-one device, but the two parts of the system are actually separate inside. The main router spec is the Qualcomm IPQ4019 featuring four ARM cores at 716 megs. It has 512 megabytes of DDR3 RAM and 4 gig of EMC storage. As I've said, it's 802.11 compatible and supports mesh Wi-Fi between compatible devices in this setup. It can have up to one master, which would be the main device, and three additional satellites per system, allowing you to get the best possible range via that tri-band mesh setup. On the NAS side of things, the spec features the Gemini Lake CPU from Intel, which is the J4125, which is four cores at two gigahertz. It has four gigs of DDR4 RAM and four gigs of eMMC OS storage. As I mentioned, it has that one internal gigabit Ethernet port, and it also has that external two and a half gig Ethernet port that allows you to transfer data at a higher speed directly into the NAS side of this device. It is compatible, as I said, with many many different types of drives which are all two and a half inch up to four terabyte SSD or they say one terabyte plus on standard serial ATA ones. The second part of this system is the QMiro 201W. Now this features the same Wi-Fi mesh modem router but doesn't have the built-in NAS functionality. It can be used as a standalone modem router or as a satellite device when combined with the main NAS to allow you to extend your Wi-Fi at home. On the back, you'll find a DC input jack. It has a reset button, a WAN port if you're using it as a standalone, as well as a LAN port and USB port as well. The WPS button is located on the top, and on the outside around the front top section, there is a LED area that will give you notifications of what the status of the device is when it's in use. The next thing we're going to do is talk about the setup on these devices, as well as mention a few things that you do need to be aware of. As I've said, this is really a two-in-one device. It is a traditional two-bay QNAP NAS with all of the features and capabilities you'd expect to find on one of their NASs, including running off their QTS software. And it is as fully featured as any of their other small NASs that I have used. There is nothing that I can see that detracts it away from that just because it's a two-in-one device. It also, though, has that tri-band Wi-Fi router capability, and again, that is separate to the NAS, and they're configured internally, so they are linked via a 1GIG port.
The setup on this is best done with the QNAP app because what that does is it walks you through the setup for the wireless router first. Then if you've got that connected, it will give you visibility of the NAS and you can go in and configure that. However, you do need to be aware that they are configured separately. They show as two separate IP addresses and two completely separate devices. You can connect directly to the NAS via that two and a half gig port, or you can connect to it via the ethernet ports, which are one gig because it has that one gig link internally. So depending on what you want to do will depend on what the best way to access this device is. For me, I configured this as a wireless access point rather than a modem router setup because I have that set up down the house already and this was configured in here. So I was using it more of a traditional access point rather than the wireless router side of things. With regards though to that, you can configure it any way you want and the QNAP software has tons of options in there allowing you to configure all of the IP ranges and everything you would expect on a normal router. To set the device up, you simply download the QU router app either from the Apple App Store or on Android and you follow the on-screen instructions. On the bottom of the NAS, you will find a rating plate with all of the information you need, including the username and passwords for both sides of the system and the configuration barcodes that allow you to scan them and set the device up with the app. The process is fairly straightforward and it will also prompt you to update the firmware as well. However, it is worth noting that on mine, when I did update the firmware, it did kick me back to the start of the process and I had to do it again. But once that was done, I was set up and ready to go. Once you've set the device up via your phone, you can access all of the configuration for both the router side of things and the NAS side of things via a browser on your PC. As I mentioned earlier, they are two separate devices and they have two independent IP addresses. On the router side of things, you go to the IP for that. You simply log in with the provided credentials and here will give you all of the information and configuration options you would expect to find in any normal Wi-Fi router. The main dashboard shows you the current setup and shows you whether the WAN port is active and whether it's connected. You've got the options for the network, the clients showing you what devices are connected. You have your Wi-Fi configuration options, including the ability to set up a schedule. You've got your services as well as your parental control options too. There are also some features specific to QNAP, including their QVPN feature and their Q1 feature as well. Also, because it is a QMRO device, it has a dedicated page for showing you the setup of that mesh Wi-Fi system. So for instance, you can see currently it only has the one device shown. However, once you've configured your second device, it will actually show your mesh devices listed under here so you can actually manage them all from the one location. Moving over to the NAS side of things, and this is very similar to what we've seen before on any of their other small or home office NAS. Everything under here allows you to configure the NAS, set up your drives, your file options, and even install additional apps, allowing you to have extra features and capabilities, including the ability to share your data around your home via smart media devices. The app center itself is installed, and this allows you to actually go in and find additional applications. So you can go into QTS essentials and install whatever apps you need to manage your data and share that data in your home or office environment. As this is a fully fledged NAS, it has all of the usual applications, including Hybrid Backup 3, allowing you to not only back up your data in your network environment, but also back that up externally as well, protecting yourself from potential data loss. With regards to setting the satellite up, that is depending again on what you intend to do. As I've mentioned, it does have a WAN port and a LAN port and you can use it as a standalone device. However, I had it configured as one of the three possible mesh devices to extend the range on the Wi-Fi. And frankly, in my environment, I was simply blowing through any walls, any rooms. I had no issues at all with the range on this system in the setup that I used it in. I used it up here in the workshop with the satellite down at the house and it was absolutely fine with no issues at all. 
Now, depending on the size of your property or the type of property will depend on if you need additional nodes for this system or not. As I've said, it is a tri-band mesh Wi-Fi, which works on the 2.4 and 5 gigs network, and it communicates between the nodes via those networks as well. As I've said, depending on the size of the property will depend on if you're going to need additional nodes or not. The standard Cumiro Plus 201W, which is the main device, supports size of properties up to 2,100 square feet. And what they say is for apartments with one or two rooms, small stories or with smart cloud storage needs. Or you can add on the additional devices and that will add an additional 2,100 square feet or 195 square meters per additional node. And again, all of this will be depending on the size of your property and the type of property, whether you've got stone walls, traditional block work, or even plasterboard or drywall. Just before I give you my final thoughts, I just wanted to talk about data transfer speeds because it's a bit more relevant on this than many routers simply because it's a NAS as well. As I've said a few times already, we have a two and a half gig ethernet port on the back directly to the NAS and three external one gig ports with an internal one gig linking the NAS to the wireless side of things. In my setup, in here and in the house, I'm running one gig ethernet and that's what I've been doing my tests with and I'm getting the speeds I would expect between 75 and 90 megabytes a second on data transfers of large one to 10 gigabyte files. And I'm seeing no real issues with transferring data to the device. I can only test it up to one gig because I don't have a 10 gig or two and a half gig card to push it further with that second port. But on that side of things, on the one gig ports, I'm seeing exactly the speeds I would expect to see. Things are very much the same on the Wi-Fi side of things and depending on the connection, the device and the speed is capable of, I'm seeing exactly what I would expect to see. I have no concerns over the data transfer rates either to the NAS or the wireless side of these devices. Okay, so to give you my thoughts on these two devices from QNAP, I have to say, I personally really like these and there is very few downsides to having the combined unit. For instance, it is a fully fledged two bay NAS. Yes, it does use the smaller two and a half inch drives, but for SSD users, that's perfect. It is a fully fledged tri-band wireless router as well with all of the capabilities and functionality you would expect to find on any normal router out there. It has parental controls, VPN, and all of the stuff you need to sort your connectivity out as well as your data storage needs as well. On the NAS side of things, it has RAID on those two devices. So you can use it as a data backup solution and also then use the hybrid backup software that QNAP make to back that up externally to look after your data as well. The Wi-Fi on it has decent range, but if that isn't enough for you, you then have this, which is the satellite, which will allow you to extend that further. And I've been using it in here. I've been using it in my home and I've put it through pretty much every test I've got. And overall, I really can't fault it. If I was to make any complaints on this system, that would be around the setup and the fact that you're having to set up the NAS and the router separately. And it could be a little bit confusing for new users. For me, it was fairly straightforward once I understood what the system was doing. However, when you are setting it up, you do need to take into account that you're going to set that router side up first via the app, and then the NAS is sitting there set up ready to go, and you need to configure that separately. You might find it easier to use the QFinder software that you can install on your PC, because that will help you find both devices on your network, and then you can choose which one to connect. Overall, if you're a home user or a small office and you're looking to get yourself a NAS and a new wireless router, this is well worth a look because it is combining those devices into one device for you. About the only other thing I will add is the thing you do need to take into account is if one of them was to fail, then that sort of makes the other one redundant. However, internally, they do appear to be separate devices. So even if there was a problem with the wireless side, you can still use the NAS without a problem. And it does have that dedicated two and a half gig ethernet port as well. For me, 
really no complaints. And if you're looking to get your devices combined, this is well worth a look. Now, as I said at the start, QNAP did send me these for free. However, they have not seen this video before I've published it and they've had no influence in its content. Really, as with many other devices out there, it comes down to your needs and capabilities. And what you should do is have a look at what features each device has and then choose the one that best suits your individual needs. And I'll be honest, I don't think you'll go far wrong with this if you were looking to get yourself a combined solution. Anyway, that's it from me. Please stay safe. Please look after yourselves. And if you do have any questions, please do put them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as soon as I possibly can.